Chris has had to hold a lot worse than that in his serious animal hospital, so we'll go back to more innocent days. Here's Rolf with the patron saint of folk singers, Roger Whittaker. Oh. Top, little oh, boy. yeah, all crocheted by my mother in law. Was it? Yeah, she crocheted all those <laughs> but, bits. But are you as rich as Roger Whitaker is now? Because he is so. incredibly he made it. Stops work. I mean, I'm the same workaholic yeah. as both yeah. of us, actually. Yeah. yeah. But he has amazing hits all around Germany and Canada and the US. And yeah. He's mega. And he still oh. wears polo necks. <laughs> yeah, well, I've just purchased one and I thought it would be in fashion. <laughs> well, this new version, which we're going to hear from you um, at about midday, yeah. um, you've done it, you've included an 808 state. They did a so, remix, yeah. A remix, That's yeah. a dance, they're a dance type band, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they, they, uh, they take your original material, all the different tracks that you put down, yeah. and they do their own thing with it, with their own drums and their own rhythmic things, and they sample bits, take bits out and yeah. repeat Well, there are five tracks on this. I mean, they really squeeze the lemon dry, don't they? They've got Sunrise Radio Edit, Sunrise State Mix, Sunrise Vocal Mix, Sunrise Dub Mix, Sunrise Outback Mix. What's the Outback Mix? <laughs> well, the Australia. Outback Mix is, uh, you're hard-pressed to find any of the song in it at all. It's all <laughs> atmospheric. It goes... <laughs> <laughs> you know, things like... Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, no! <laughs> and, <laughs> Fine. No, that's all. That's you brilliant. know what I'm saying. All sorts of stuff. Well, we're going to hear, hear that later in the program. What's all this beastly behaviour? Have you written? Is that from Animal, Hospital? Got, Animal Hospital? Well, no. This is the this is follow on from the follow on from the la from last year's one. We yeah. had a, a big hit at Christmas, so we've we've done a similar thing, just finding true animal tales from all around the world. Oh, oh right. So it's not stuff that's on the series. It's no, no. no. Actually, David Grant was on with a, yes, with a book about, yeah. mm. you know, he's got a great book out. Tell us one of the tales, if you can, very briefly. Um, what's, what's one of the best ones in the book? One of the stories is about Greyfriars Bobby from Edinburgh, a little little tiny dog that uh, mm. his master suddenly dropped dead as, it, as they were going through the streets of Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was buried, obviously, and, and the dog wouldn't leave that spot. Oh, okay. oh. And he was fed by a local shop and... Uh, mm -hmm. Oh. And they built a little shelter for him, and he stayed there about 15 years. This little what dog, and finally that? died. Would not leave that would not leave spot. Oh, dear! Yeah, amazing, horrible. amazing stuff. So, so at least, at least in books like that, and in Animal Hospital, you know your stuff. We watched 101 Dalmatians. Like, have you seen that? The human version. Have you yeah, seen yeah. it? Yeah. Like the deliberate mistake, raccoons in London. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. reasonable. Raccoons in Regent Park. Yeah. <laughs> Great. But <laughs> the American market, though, you see, that's why I, I know, love the coon. Listen, will you draw something for us, Rolf? Yeah. We always ask you to do this. Anything What's you like. Anything you like. We'd better do us. Um, can I do it horizontally? You can do it anything you like. Any way you see, it fits want. the television. Right. Oh, just be quiet now. Didgeridoo on the floor again. <laughs> um, I'll put your didgeridoo up again. People, people always <laughs> talking about how to... Did you mean to bash me on the knee with it? But no, I didn't. I'm sorry. No, it's the initial shock. But people always worry about lettering. If you get really brave and bold with lettering, you can you can make it look good and gutsy by hmm. so you then you go like that and you go like that and you you just take the letters and you great you know so you've got a really nice and it, and it looks like you meant it to be like that you know uh -huh. what i mean i know what you're saying we yeah. are um, <coughs> we're certainly not going to forget the title of this new oh what, <laughs> what is the title of this <laughs> It just shows you how you can, if you take courage and confidence, you can, you hmm. can really make a, a nice thing out of a mess. It looks like yeah. a mess, and then, then you get the, the character hopping away like this, the self-portrait. <laughs> 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 You've got to do that while you're drawing, or they don't believe it's me. You see? <laughs> <laughs> do, do you remember when? I don't know which newspaper or which survey it was, went around saying who, t who was the most famous painter anyone had ever heard of, and they all said, Who? Who's the most famous painter? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> Not Leonardo Hang da Vinci or anything. I've got to get the hat. Well, you see, Leonardo didn't have all that many television shows that he was on. <laughs> <laughs> didn't no. do Animal Hospital. That no. was a big you problem, see, really. No, Rembrandt. Rembrandt <laughs> didn't, uh, didn't do all that many 
television shows. Van Gogh didn't do all that. You did good to see you do that, Van Gogh, once. Then. We've got to. We've got, we must show this. I mean. What? Oh, it's brilliant. Run the Oh, look. Oh, great. Oh, great. What? oh, you carry on. We'll do show a little bit of this because we think this Better is Better do brilliant. the sun coming up here. Right. Right. Yeah. I see a little silhouette of a man. Scaramouche, Scaramouche, will you do the fandango? We love it. Uh, what yeah. happened to that? That was released in 1996, wasn't it? Yeah, very few people purchased that. Well, they should have done. Somebody, they yeah, have done. It should have been I thought it was good fun. Can we take this? Can we take because we've got a collection we've of got yours a collection now. Of yours, man. Yeah, yeah, actually, can I just say, I'll just do a horizon yeah. through there. Yeah, otherwise, it, it doesn't work. There, if you can imagine ah, the horizon right, going yeah. through there, like <laughs> and and you just do a little square up bit with your finger on the side of that and, uh, to keep the and uh, oh we'll have to because oh, okay. if you do it down there you get bumpy bits on there you see because oh, yeah, of the bumpy of sort of thing right, it goes <laughs> very nice the bumpy bits right. are lovely thank oh, you oh good <laughs> good, good luck with it we're, 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 we're listening to it it's on at the end of the show he's singing at the end of the show, the end of the show. Thank what you a good run. Uh, it's a thank pleasure. you right yes. the daily mail's jackie stevens up next with uh, her weekly look at the world of the soaps forward because all he had to do was speak complete rubbish with conviction and uh, and as all his life he'd been taught nothing but nonsense by priests and teachers it was peasy even when being throttled by a cider man why by men more efficiently than animal organism that is why we will rule the galaxy loose thinking the trouble with cyber men is that they've got hydraulic muscles and of course hydraulic brains to go with them <laughs> I'm correct about what this contains, and should accidentally drop it. Now I want some information from you, cyber leader. And I'm sure you got it. Hello. <laughs> yes, I did. Hello. hello, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> and it seems like that, as you said, that make you very big in Abu Dhabi. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and around the world. Oh, around yes. the world. And yeah. around the world. Well, they just did another Doctor Who, which bombed, didn't it? An American co-production. Didn't work. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. No, no I didn't. But, but I, I understand didn't. it was amazingly dull and ordinary. Yeah, uh, which is one thing Doctor Who never was. No, uh, apparently it wasn't very mysterious, and so uh, we've mm. heard the last of it. I'm afraid. It's a shame. Oh, that's a shame. Mm. Well, I don't feel very grieved about it. <laughs> but you've had enough. <laughs> we've had enough. Absolutely. Okay. You were working on a building site, weren't you, when they offered you? I the was. Start? Yes. Yes, I would work anywhere really. I'm mm. quite shameless in that way. Yes. <laughs> but that was a long time ago, you know. Yes. I know. I know. Yes. How, how old were you when, when it fell away? I suppose I was in my... I was still in my 30s. Yeah. I suppose I was about 37. And you still... I like this. You, you have the grace to say... So many people turn their backs on something which has been a, a huge success for them, but you have the grace to say that actually it was your favourite part. It was just such fun. Well, it was because, uh, you know, I always wanted to be a great success in mm. something. Mm. Uh, initially, when I was young, I wanted to be a martyr. But I, <laughs> I saw through that. I thought well, you wanted to be an orphan, didn't you? Well, I wanted to be an orphan, but when that didn't happen, I wanted to, because the Germans didn't bomb my mother. Um, <laughs> but I, then I wanted to be a martyr, and then I took up this long, passionate fling with God. Mm -hmm. And for a while, I thought we were going to, you know, we were an item, God and I. Mm -hmm. um, but then, I, you know, I went off him, really. I well, did you go? I mean, obviously, you were in a monastery and you, you came out again, but have you still got a faith? Would you still describe yourself as a Christian? Well, no, I couldn't describe myself as a Christian, but I mean, I do read my Bible, but that's because I love, you know, cheap, lurid melodrama. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I read the Old Testament, and it really does actually slay me, you know, because we got off to a very bad start, you know, according to the Garden yeah. of Eden. I mean, the firstborn man, as you know, was a murderer, yeah. killed his brother. Yeah. And I was reading Genesis the other day. Do you know that God was sick of us by chapter 7? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when he first committed genocide. <laughs> it was. He said to Noah, get in the ark. And Noah said, well, he said, just get in the ark. I'm going to drown the rest of the buggers. Yes. And he did. You'll come back to him in the end, though, won't you, Tom? Eh? Um, I don't know, really. I'm not all that clever, but maybe he'll come back to me. <laughs> tap you on the shoulder one day. Yeah, you say hello. Yeah. No, but you wanted to be an orphan, didn't you? Because, yes. because in, during the war, orphans got American packages. Yes, yes. Orphans yeah. got baseball caps. That's right, and Superman comics and stuff. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so lots of us wanted to be orphans. <laughs> uh, and we used to go to church and pray that our mothers would be bombed oh. on the way back from the pub, yes. <laughs> it's horrible. I, yeah, I thought it was rather nice, although I was devoted to my mother, but... Uh, but I did want to be an orphan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is just this is just a live, talky sort of flavour of, of, of the flavour of your book, Who on Earth 
Tom Baker, which has been serialized in one of the papers, so we've had a chance to read it. Um, it's, it's very moving in parts. I mean, uh, you say that when your father came back from the war, and how long had he been overseas for? How long had he not seen your mother for? Ages, well, well, a long time, yeah, a couple yeah. of years, maybe. maybe a bit uh, more. And when he got, when he arrived home and emptied his kit bag, uh, all the now, where no, my mother, you, you tell me, where my mother unravelled his dobie, his washing, as I used to say in those days, mm. uh, she found two years' letters unopened but from she sent her. her. From her, she'd written to him every fortnight for two years, <sighs> and he'd never opened them. Uh, That's right. Yeah. That's extraordinary. It was extraordinary. Yes. Uh, Why? Do you think it, could it have been that he couldn't bear to be reminded of home, or...? No, I think he was just bone idle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, he was an odd fellow. Uh, I, mean, I, I mean, at least he could have slipped them, couldn't he? Yeah. And she might have thought he'd read them. <laughs> yeah. but, it, but it seems odd that he brought them home, you see. That's why I think... Yeah, no, no, that's right. He, 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 wrote, uh, he really wasn't all that clever. But I mean, he, he should have dumped them over the side. <laughs> he'd been around the world twice. <laughs> <laughs> but did they, not, they did, then didn't speak to each other, did they? She didn't years? speak to him again. She didn't speak to him ever again? No. Not for nine years. Good God, but they didn't separate. They didn't No, no, up. they had nowhere to go, you see. And also, he didn't have a suitcase to take his things away. <laughs> he was very poor, you know. Lots of the poor would stay together because they were too poor to part, yes. really. Yes. And so then, became, then came the great drama of their lives, mm. was how subtle and refined their methods of torturing each other could yeah. be. Oh. Like yeah. lots of people who want to stay together, they refine their torture of each other. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, were you a go-between if they weren't talking? Well, I was a go-between, but it was in an absurd way because if he asked me, if he asked me mm. to ask my mother what was for dinner, she was there. <laughs> you know, so it was a bit, of, a bit of a black farce, really. So she. But you literally then turn so around. So she, she'd say, ask him what he wants for his supper, and he heard that. So I'd say, what do you? She wants to know what you want for your supper, and he'd say, ask her what she's got. And I'd say, he wants to know what you've got, and she'd say, liver and onions, and uh, he'd say, tell her I hate it. Dire. Especially when they had a row, because you would have been the conduit of the argument as well. Yeah, but mind you, I wasn't a child when that was happening. No, uh, I was really? already, you know, I was already uh, a, a student and uh, a student actor. Mm. So it wasn't bad. And also, you know, when you're an actor, you watch these things, and I thought, you know, maybe one day I'll be able to play him. Mm. Mm. And then I realised, now it's such an awful part. I'd much rather play my mother. <laughs> which which didn't is very you likely find... nowadays. So you weren't wounded by by that? <laughs> well, I mean, I. I hope I haven't given the impression that I was wounded, but no, I, no. I, I was sad for them, you know, mm. I was sad that they, they... I remember when my mother was dying, and my father and mother died in a fortnight of each other, and, mm. um, and when my mother was uh, so ill that her hands were too wasted and sore to touch the counterpane, and I said, uh, full of guilt and carting down a box of chocolates, hard centres, I suppose, knowing my lack of tact, mm. and I said, is there anything you want? And she said, yes. I just want to outlive that old goat in the next room. Oh, uh, and she didn't, you know. And, uh, oh. and then, and then uh, when my brother went to see my father and told him the terrible news about my mother's death, he wept, you know, the tears, the wasted tears of mm. 34 years mm. or something. Mm. Wasted, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. One of the saddest stories I've ever heard. Oh, no, no, no. But there are, <laughs> no, if you turn over, you know, I cheer up on the next page. Yeah, I actually, yeah. you did ask me a sad one. Yeah, I we know, did. We I did, know, did, yeah. Story though, the fascinating story of how you met someone in a restaurant and talked to him for two hours and discovered oh, yes. that he was your son. Yes, I was in, I was in New, uh, not New, uh, in New Zealand a mm. few months ago, and um, my wife and I were having a most marvellous dinner on the harbour side, and we were very happy that night. And uh, when it came to pay the bill, I, uh, the man said, "It's all right, sir. It's been taken care of." And I said to my wife, "You watch. It's some nutty Doctor oh, Who yeah. fan here. It says yes. something." <laughs> and no one ever pays a, a bill, do they? without wanting to see you. Because, I mean, that really is self-sacrifice. Mm. You, you know, they, you, they always want... Actually, no one's ever offered they won't do that. Well, lots of, people have, lots of people have paid my bill. Mm. Lots of people. But, but they, they always want to put their tongues down my throat or something <laughs> like that, you know, because... Especially if they're anthropologists. They get their dinner to, back, obviously. They sometimes do it with torches. Um, anyway, so... Uh, the man said, your, di your dinner's been paid. I said, no, I'd oh, rather pay my own dinner. He said, no, it's, it's in the till, sir. It's paid. So I said to my wife, come on, let's go in then. So uh, they said, this man's a fan of yours. And when we went in, and this marvellous light, sharp light coming in, beautiful restaurant, but much more informal than ours, and uh, there was this very good-looking big man and looking at me rather quizzically. And so, you know, when you're an actor, uh, often people, you know, send for me or mm. know something about me or mm. have seen my performances and therefore want to shoot me or something. And I <laughs> said, uh, I, so I said to him, 
Uh, it's your name. I said, it's your name, Morgan, by any chance? You always say that. Journalists would say that. Yeah. Mm. You don't want to be on. He said, no, my name's Baker, Piers Baker. I'm your son. Good. Good. Oh. Well, there he is. Yeah. He is so I said, uh, there he is there. So I said, naturally, I said, how do you do? <laughs> <laughs> and he ordered us a beer, and it's been fine. The other day, we watched the Grand Prix together. Fantastic. Yeah. How, l how long had you been apart for? Well, I hadn't seen him, I think, I can't remember, it was a long time, because mm. I didn't recognize him. About 16 years, maybe. That long? Yeah. yeah. But he works all around the world, you know. Yeah. Mm. So. And are you now an item? Again? Yes, we are. Yes, Excellent. he came. And he actually rang me up last night. Yeah, I'm going to see him because I'm just off on a book tour. Mm -hmm. yeah. 50 towns and cities. Because mm. uh, okay. I don't want to miss any... I'm going to actually do evening signings in people's houses. Yep. You know, at hospitals, outpatients, schools, anywhere. Mm. Good Quite stuff. Quite shamelessly. Yes. Um, no, it's good. There are, there are a, a thousand stories in the book. We've just taken three there talking about it to give it a flavour. What we haven't covered is uh, your, your three marriages. I just wanted to ask you one question about them. Are you the sort of person that looks back and says, well, because two of them didn't work out and the present one does very much, I'd rather just have had this one going back to, to the beginning? Or actually, are you, have you been enriched by, by all that? Oh, yes, I think have? so. Um, I, yes, I've been enriched, really, by, especially I've been enriched by my poverty. Mm. Uh, I mean, that's one of the paradoxes. Yes, on the way. I mean, that's mm. why, in a sense, I call the book rather ironically and teasingly, Who on Earth is Tom Baker? Mm. Mm. Um, because, you know, some, uh, sometimes I haven't always known but no, I have no regrets about the other managers. Mm. Uh, mm. You know, they were, they were okay, and then they weren't okay, and so one pushes on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a great, it's a great book. Thank you very much for coming and talking about it. Good luck with ah, the tour in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the outpatients departments and people's private kitchens and all of that. You know, we had at least a couple of other clips to put, play oh, with well, Doctor Who, and you were so interesting uh, uh, that we uh, forgot about them. So that's really well, nice. it doesn't matter. Very nice to talk to you. Thank, thank you very thank much, you, Tom. Thank you. We've got to take another break now. We'll be back in just a minute with Monty's gardening phone in. This version of Sunrise. Take it away, Lux. Bye bye. Bye. See you.